Dear listeners, good morning and welcome to Comme d'Archi, the podcast that opens the doors to the fascinating world of architecture. For newcomers, let me introduce myself. I'm the spokesperson of Anne-Charlotte Despont, PhD in History of Architecture, published author, head of a communication and development agency based in Paris, France, dedicated to architecture. Let's meet every week to discuss culture and architecture with specialists and learn how to look at projects through a context and diversity lens. Thank you for being with me today, and now it's time for talent. Bienvenue dans Comme d'Archi. Dear listeners, hello, this is Esther on behalf of Anne-Charlotte. Let's meet again today on the first English Comme d'Archi of 2021 on a text written by the French architect Stéphanie Bertinaminel. The subject is a very recent, very lively and interesting story of the designing of a Parisian triplex, the Triplex Ampère. About this project, the owner is a private individual. It is located in the 17th arrondissement of Paris. This project was carried out between September 2019 and March 2020. Stéphanie wrote, This Triplex Ampère is a project for a family of four people a 235 square meters apartment on three floors. In the spring of 2019, clients with whom I had already visited another property that did not meet their needs contacted me to organize a visit to this triplex for which they had just made an offer to purchase. During my first visit, I immediately fell in love with this place, both for the potential it offered, but also because some places like this one tell a story. The story of this place is rooted in the history of 19th century Paris, since the triplex is located in a private mansion built at the end of the 19th century by the architect Alfred Ferraud in a neo-Louis XIII style, but also in the history of Paris in the 1980s when the mansions of the 17th arrondissement were transformed into offices. The apartment had therefore, over time, undergone many transformations to go from a mansion to an office and then back to an apartment. These transformations had somewhat altered its beauty. It was necessary not only to give the triplex a new life, but also to rethink the spaces to make them more functional and better adapted to current uses. Before the project started, the place had been inhabited for more than 30 years by a family with five children. The rooms had been very divided and little light was coming through the space. However, the previous owners had lived there for many happy moments and beyond a simple sale, they had at heart to transmit this heritage to a new family and not to an office. The importance of the transmission of the apartment, I immediately felt it when I met the former owners. The work in an existing building always passes by a respect of what was realized before us, and thus, when one has the chance to crowd the previous owner or to know the history of the place, it is always a formidable starting point for its development. At the request of the new owners, I was therefore asked in March 2019 to rethink and restructure the whole of this triplex, the program of the project being to create an apartment that is at the same time homely, family-friendly and functional. The first consent from the start of the design phase was to completely review the distribution of spaces and their organization in order to adapt them to the needs of the new owners. It was useless for them to have restricted spaces without light. Favoring light and letting it pass through from space to space were therefore the first axis we worked on. For this, all the floors were reopened and the partitions were removed in order to rethink the space as a whole. The work was first done in plan by redefining the uses of each room and then in a second step in volume with the opening of the living room ceiling that creates a double height. Previously clocked, it immediately became obvious that it had to be opened to create a link between the spaces and levels. The goal of this first step of opening up was also to allow all the rooms to receive natural light, which was not previously the case. The objective was then to preserve and enhance the light that was coming through after demolition. Thanks to a new layout of the rooms, the apartment, which is doubly oriented, is now bathed in natural light throughout the day and in all rooms. As far as the distribution of space is concerned, it quickly became clear that, as in a house, each floor should have a specific function. The first floor is therefore reserved for reception areas, the second floor for the bedrooms, and the third floor for work and relaxation areas. As with all the renovations I am involved in, we were particularly careful to get spaces that could be appropriate for different uses and thus allow the use of the different rooms to evolve over time. 
For example, the playroom between the two children's bedroom is also an office or a reading room, and the common areas are not fixed so as to allow a certain flexibility. The new distribution of spaces has therefore offered fluidity in spaces that were very fragmented, while allowing a better distribution of the different reception rooms, leisure areas and private rooms. On the first floor, where the kitchen, dining room and living room are located, we have reworked the volume of the kitchen, which was previously opaque and created a recess in the living room. The removal and shifting of the kitchen partition allowed us to find a more coherent and better organized living room. The kitchen, now separated by an oak canopy, benefits from luminous space and above all allows the family not to be cut off from the rest of the living room while still maintaining a certain privacy. The room is not totally open, but not totally closed either. Under the glass roof, shallow layouts create additional storage space and avoid placing bulky furniture. Regarding the decorative choice, during their various visits to properties before purchase, the clients had visited an apartment with shades of blue in the living room and sent me some photos for reference. The choice were therefore fairly quickly made for a blue kitchen. The love for the mountains brought the theme of wood, from there was born the idea of the Canterbury Chalet revisited. The clients have confident and sharp tastes and we are able to pool our inspirations to create a warm and luminous space revisiting the theme of the chalet but adapting it to a Parisian apartment. In the living room, one of the requests was to be able to store the many books, so we created a library on either side of the fireplace. The library was made to measure, with niches of different sizes to give it a bit of dynamism to the whole. The fireplace was sanded and restored in a wood color that reminds us of the parquet floor of the oak arrangement of the first floor. The blue of the bookcase echoed the blue of the kitchen and the entrance hall, and conversely, the edges of the bookcase are treated in oak, echoing the kitchen's glass roof. The choice of color in the bookcase gives depth to the living room while creating continuity between the rooms, which visually enlarges the perception of space. The light oak flooring gives unity to the hall by bringing a temporary touch. On the first floor, it is the existing parquet to which we have given a new life and not a new floor. On the other hand, on the upper floors, a new parquet floor has been laid to replace an old scissor floor that covered a concrete slab. Also in the ground floor, we have worked on a base of vertical oak strips both in the entrance and in the dining room, always with the aim of creating a visual continuity and a link between the spaces, even if they have different uses and functions. On the second floor, we proceeded in the same way, opening up the space as much as possible. A large floor plate now leads to the children's bedrooms, connected by a common playroom, overlooking the double height of the living room. Niv, five years old, and Cami, seven years old, used to meet in each other's bedroom in their previous apartment, and so we decided to offer them a common space to play and exchange. From there was Bonnie's playroom, which opens on the double height of the living room and allows the light to cross all the triplex. The glass and wood guard rail was inspired by the railing of a mountain chalet that our guests love. For the children's rooms, it was immediately decided that each one should have its own identity while remaining in line with the chromatic identity of the triplex. In Neve's room, we opted for a pink with a touch of red. In Camille's room, we found a blue but deeper than the one in the living room. Each of the children was able to chew their own wallpaper from a selection that we proposed to them in order to involve them in their new living space. The rest of the floor also hosts more technical spaces, such as a waiter's room, laundry room, toilets and a bathroom. Separated by a few steps is the parental bedroom with its large volume and its mini bathroom designed as a pink cocoon. This room already had a very nice volume that we chose to keep and we simply worked from the color and the headboard to give back dynamism without suffocating the room. So we found wood arrangements and another pink tone that echoes Neve's room. The parents' bedroom, which is deliberately small and hidden behind a closet door, is also treated in a pink total look. In the stairwell, the remnant of the old building stairwell, we hesitated for a long time to find the blue of the ground floor, but in the end we opted with the clients for a slightly fanciful wallpaper representing animals in a softer colour. One of the client's requests was also to be able to store one or more bicycles, and so we created storage space thanks to a mezzanine structure accessible from the stairwell. On the top floor, accessible from an existing Japanese step staircase, the possibility of reorganizing the room were more limited. However, we were able to recover space by removing concrete stairs that gave access to mezzanines. 
In term of use, this top floor, which is slopping under the roofs, was designed as a relaxation space, housing an office and a sports room, as well as a third bathroom. On this floor, we had the good surprise during the construction to discover bricks both in the bathroom, but also in the office and gym. It was therefore decided to preserve and enhance them. Always in the spirit of enhancing the old and bringing in modernity, bricks and wood to noble and pure materials are enough to give identity to char and character to these rooms. In the sports hall, we worked on a cabin for the children, this time using the theme of wooden cleat space to create a claustra. On the landing, the oak and glass railing responds to the railing on the second floor, always with the same aim of declining the wood's guiding thread in the different spaces. Throughout the project, we paid particular attention to adapting a responsible approach from the spatial organization to the interior design, including the choice of materials. We sought to reuse the elements that could be reused in an approach that aimed to avoid wasting resources. For example, we decided to keep as many of the old elements as possible, such as the brick on the third floor or the parquet flooring on the first floor, which has been completely renovated. Similarly, technical elements such as the heating system, which was recent, but also the cast iron radiators have been restored and we have added a thermostat control system. Other aesthetic elements such as the chimney could be recovered and restored to combine the past and the present. These elements, beyond the ecological approach of recycling, allow us to keep the identity of the house while transforming it into a warm and contemporary home. After six months of work, the clients were able to take possession of the premises at the end of March 2020, two days before the confinement. I was able to return several times to the site, and each time it was the same amazement to discover how this triplex was operated by the occupants. Well, thank you for listening, good day to you all, and let's meet again next week for a new episode in English. Until then, take care of yourself and your loved ones. Goodbye. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to tune in to our previous content on Instagram at Comdarchi Podcast. If you like it, make sure to promote the podcast by giving it five stars on Apple Podcast and adding a comment or on any of your favorite podcast platforms. And don't forget to subscribe and listen to all of our episodes for free. See you soon, and until then, take care of yourself.